I was literally just like, damn it, M. Night. You're supposed to be making good movies now. Mm -hmm. Why are you? Oh. Right. Oh. <laughs> uh... I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're going to get into some other weirdness going on <laughs> today in the theaters um, this weekend. Well, as this weekend, as we're recording this, yep. but Glass came has out. come out of uh, the M. Night Shyamalan uh, cinematic universe <laughs> of superheroes. Yep. Um, so this all started with Unbreakable, uh, which starred uh, Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. Yep. Um, and it really kind of just kicked off the whole, like, what if superheroes really existed in the world today? You know, because you have, um, and it was an interesting premise. It was just like, well, everybody has a direct opposite, you know, like Bruce Willis was the unbreakable character and you had, uh, Mr. Mr. Glass, Glass who, who was, was the, the breakable, breakable person broke really easily. Yes. Um, and, but he had an, ex he was very very intelligent, which right. I was surprised that Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis wasn't really, 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 really dumb. dumb. <laughs> I mean, there were some moments of the movie. I was well, kind of like, he was thick. If you, you know, the British thing, he was kind of thick. He didn't think he was like, Oh no, no, no. I'm like, okay. He's here. <laughs> so, yeah, but, um, uh, I don't know what the reviews are like for Unbreakable, but for the most part, I would say like a lot of people really enjoyed that movie, mm -hmm. really enjoyed the twist. It was more of M. Night Shyamalan when he was kind of in his prime. Now, the thing was, and we, we saw this in the pitch meeting as well uh, on Screen Rant, but yeah, he was just like, yeah, this yeah, is 13 Ryan, years. Yeah. like, yeah, it's like 13 or some odd yeah. years later. Is anyone going to remember that? <laughs> and it was, it was like, well, why is Bruce Willis here? Who, who's that? Who's Mr. Glass? I'm just like, well, yeah, I'm like only like fans of his movies or, you know. Well, people. I think they were hoping that people would have forgotten all the other bad movies that Emily Shyamalan had done. I mean, like yeah. what The Happening, it yeah. Last Airbender. I'm like, oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think, gosh, I was looking at his, I, his filmography here and I'm like, as a director, because <sighs> you said The Visit was pretty good. Visit was decent, yes. Yeah, so like, okay, so you did Unbreakable. Mm -hmm. Really good. Right mm -hmm. after The Sixth Sense, which was amazing. It was like, oh, my God, he's amazing. Yeah. Then you did the village. Oh, sorry, signs. Signs. Uh, I like signs. I mean, I, I know I it has its problems. Up to a point. But, up to a point. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, their weakness is water. I'm like, I land on the water planet. Anyway, well, there, um, the there's village. there's a reason for that, but yeah, uh, they they kind of they do explain that, but yeah, I, go ahead. I, I must have missed it. Yeah. The village, which actually I kind of liked, mm -hmm. but the I know people were like the, the the it was you know the twist, and I'm like, mm -hmm. but that, I thought it was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hate that movie so much. No, I didn't either. Yeah, I, I liked it. The in the lady in the water. What did not go over well? I kind of liked that a little bit. Maybe it was know. that. Yeah, Lady in the Water was weird because it was, it was like I watched this movie. I'm like I enjoyed it, but I right. enjoyed it on the level that mm -hmm. I took it as. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, he said this is a story that he tells his kids at right. night. So yeah, I just yeah. I took it as that. Right. I didn't take it as like, oh, I'm going to see a, a you know a super serious film here <laughs> or anything like that. I was like, I expected this to be kind of, I expected it to be silly. So I was right, like, right, okay, right. sure. Yeah, was, and then uh, we had uh, the happening. Who? <laughs> last Airbender. Air the happening. Last Airbender mm -hmm. and After Earth. After Earth. I think everyone's hoping that you forget most of those <laughs> and just jump straight to split and glass. Yeah. Well, I mean, people started to fall off after signs. Like some people like yeah. signs was the one I think that was actually kind of divisive. That, that, they weren't unbreakable. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they said, oh, no, I can't do this anymore. And they, and they broke. When I was I, I saw this trailer, this is the first trailer I saw for this movie. And I was like, oh, OK, this is a little bit more. This was definitely M. Knight in his yeah. In his doing his thing, like right. just uh, just establishing the shots very and everything, simple. very simple, you know, Great just angle, yeah, like close ups, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, frame the shot him doing well. his thing, and mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, I can kind of get with this or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this one just made the movie just seem very. Uh, it was like, oh, this is going to be really suspenseful. Right. Uh, and then the second trailer came out. <laughs> it's kind of like the house with the clock. Yes. The like, yes. Once it dark, it was like, what, is this the same movie? This one was like, uh, this one's like, all right, this is, I was watching it and I'm like, okay, this just looks silly. <laughs> I mean, it just like, I was, there was just certain moments in it that I was just like, all right, this looks more like a Marvel movie than it does like one of his kind of movies. Right. And I was just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, 
this looks silly. <laughs> it's not that I don't expect certain things to happen or certain hear him to say certain things. I was just kind of like, eh, all right, I, I'm, I'm not so sure now. So I was like, okay, well let's let's go to this movie. Let's let's check it out. Let's see what's going to happen and everything. And um, so I will say this: as I was watching this movie. I continuously was getting frustrated. Really? Yes. <laughs> I was continuously getting frustrated because there was a lot of stuff that was going on that just raised too many questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, and we talked about this after the film. Yes. That's there kind was, of one of the things I wrote down. Yeah. And I was there was times where, like, okay, you're right off the bat, you're going to, you know, you're going to have the battle or a battle yep. between... Um, between uh, the, I forget what his actual superhero name is, but you have the Horde and. Versus, well, uh, <laughs> I think he, he, they called them, I mean, they changed the name a few times in the film. They're talking about, oh, they, the, the, the whisper, not the whisper, but the tiptoer or something. Yeah, like, yeah, I forget what is actual, the overseer. The overseer, okay. yeah. So you have that right off the bat. I'm like, okay, okay, we're jumping right into it. Sure. And then they get caught. And then there's no, yeah, and it's like, like, how? How? If you knew where the beast was and you, didn't catch him by now uh-huh. because they were waiting for something else. Yeah, because I mean, they're were they waiting for both of them to get together to make it easier? That's doesn't that kind of mean they knew that he had kidnapped mm-hmm. girls and where they were and he they could the girls could have been murdered horribly. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, that's the thing. I'm like, yeah, these are are these the authorities? Yeah, what? and that's the thing. I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's like, like well, how? Sense. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, you you found them somehow, or whatever. And you showed up. There's no news. So I'm like, there's no news about that. You would think like you don't this see, only like, happened a couple weeks ago right, with the with the see, guy. Like, you don't see like the DA coming in to interview people. Yes. You don't see the cops. Yes, like you, know, she, you don't she, see lawyers coming in. Yes. You would have been know. like, and then and so they they wind up in this hospital, all three of them together, uh, Mr. Glass, the overseer, and the horde, and they're all together. And she's you know she's talking the doctor, um, who you saw in the beginning of the trailer. She's talking with them and everything, and it's just like. You know, there's just certain things I'm just like, well, you're trying to prove that they have this psychosis. It's not a spoiler. You see it in the trailer. Mm-hmm. They're trying to prove like, oh, you just have this psychosis. You have this problem. You're not really a superhero. Come on. You know, you're not. I mean, yes, he's super smart or whatever. But yeah, we have okay. people around here that are super, super smart, smart all the time or Doctors, whatever. Yeah. Look, there's been strong men. You are a very sure. built person. Actually, or whatever. he doesn't look very built. He looks um, very normal. I mean, um, Bruce Willis' character looks really normal. No, 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 not, not Bruce Willis. Um, McAvoy. McAvoy. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was shape. like, okay, yeah, he's you're a strong person. I'm like, right. look, there, there's evidence that you're in a computer where you see, like, these rock climbers. They could scale. Sure. Well, like, look. Well, they, per- they a, per- a perfect this. example would be Bru- <coughs> Bruce Lee. Bruce mm-hmm. Lee. A lot of people say Bruce Lee was probably the best martial arts ever and mm-hmm. probably the most fit man ever. Right. But normally you look at him and you're like, oh, he's in good shape. Mm-hmm. But then when he kind of did the flex thing and his like right. muscles ripple, you're mm-hmm. like, holy cow. This yeah, you guy's see how really, really ripped. Yes. But he's so small mm-hmm. and he doesn't normally do that. But then when he really kind of flexes, you're like, holy mm-hmm. cow. So he's like a muscle builder guy who looks big. Okay, he's a big exactly. guy. And then he flexes, you're like, holy crap, that guy's really, really pumped. Yes. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm like, all right. And then you start talking to, to Bruce Willis, and you're just like, well, you know, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, you have this just intuitiveness that you, you don't really, when you touch people, you don't really get visions. You're, you're, like, just the, you're like the the me, you know, the mesmerizer who yeah. reads people's thoughts. Yeah, and, it's, yeah like you can, it's like you can, it's like you can just kind of like, you see certain things, and you're just great at deduction or yeah. whatever. You're yeah, yeah. great at the sleight of hand thing or whatever. It's like, you know, you're not really weak against water. You just think that that's a psychosis thing right. or whatever but it's again yeah, it's like you had, a, you had a why? trauma with water as a kid therefore you're saying yeah. oh no, no it's my it's your it's your weakness or whatever and i'm just like okay so why yeah. do you have a room why are you keeping him in a a steel room with a huge with reinforced a huge door. reinforced door with water with jets water everywhere jets. Yeah. why are you keeping him in there why are you like okay and then she said but she says and if you try to break through the door, mm-hmm. the waters will turn on and whatever. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so you're just, and in, 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 in a psychological term, mm-hmm. you actually just fed into a psychosis because you're saying mm-hmm. this room is designed because we know you're strong. If it wasn't, we, we would say like, okay, look, the, the door is reinforced. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be like three inches mm-hmm. of steel or something. Yeah. Like, the door is reinforced. Mm-hmm. So even though you think you're strong, 
you won't be able to get through that door. So mm-hmm. you can kind of give him the the you know, yes the the, the you know yeah. kind of psych him and out. Then, yeah, and then something happens. And then, say, the wa- and then say, well, those water nozzles will fill the room with water. You don't actually have to have the water. Right. He doesn't know. Right. He and then when, when, when it, vision. Yeah. I mean, and then like, when it happens, like he does try to break out at one point. Of course they they, they all they, do at some yeah. point. But like he tries to break out. The mm-hmm. water comes off or goes off and everything. And she goes to see him. And it's like, why are you don't look, look at you? This is just water, you yeah. know. And she's like, and she's doing this whole like very psychological calm, thing. And I'm just like, it's like, just water. Look at you, like you're you're all over, you're all over the place. You're acting like you can't even stand up. That doesn't make sense. They they know the son was in on this whole you know overseer thing. I'm like, right. wait, so no one's gonna arrest him? Right. Why is nobody like questioning him? He's, yeah, an he's an accomplice. Why is nobody questioning? He shows up and he's like, hey, well, uh, well, and tries not, to tell the even, story. No, not even that he shows up. If they knew who he was, his name, yeah. David, it's so he goes, David, it'd be all right. Mm-hmm. So then if they knew who he is, then they obviously know where he either lives and or mm-hmm. his business because his name is David Dunn. It's Dunn Security. It's like, right. Durr. All right. And then they would ra- they would raid that place and find out evidence of, oh, there's all this information exactly. of them doing that. So it's now we're going like, to build the case. None of that happens. We're none like, of that happens. I'm like, cops? what is Why going on? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what it's is bizarre. happening? And then it's just like, there's all, like I said, there's all of these mm-hmm. logical errors Questions. after logical error. And I'm just like, yeah. M. Night, what are you doing? And right. like the more the movie went on, mm-hmm. the, the more frustrated I was getting. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like... Mm, well, there was a scene like, that you showed in the preview that you had up with mm-hmm. all three of them in this in your scene. Mm-hmm. You see Bruce Willis's unbreakable character, David, yeah. bolted to the floor with mm-hmm. chains on, mm-hmm. and the chair is bolted to the mm-hmm. steel plate on mm-hmm. the bolted to the floor. Yeah, and I'm like, again, why would you say you're not super strong, David, mm-hmm. but yet still chain him up with chains and a, and bolting mm-hmm. him to the floor? Yeah, and I'm like, what? What? Why is- not? Why not just? What? You know, have regular psychiatric restraints, a straight jacket. Why yeah. not do that? Because he's not really strong. You're saying, oh, you're not really strong. And that's the but thing. we don't like, want you to hurt yourself. Yeah, that's that's the, how you play. And, and this is going power. on all throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. It's going through all throughout the movie. I'm like, come on. Towards the end of the movie, they're having like their main climactic, that big climactic fight and everything right. like that. And then at this point, you know, there's, you know, cops show up. Mm-hmm. And they don't say anything. They're just there in their armored gear with their right. with their batons and their right. shields and Trying everything. Trying not to hurt anybody. Sure. And I'm just like, they're not going to shoot. They're not anymore. saying a single thing. No. No, they're just like, I'm like, can you just, hey, stop? You're under arrest. <laughs> You're disturbing the peace. Right. But, get on but, the ground. Get now. on the ground. <laughs> no, nothing. Cop talk. Nothing. I'm like, I live on. I'm like, do do these cops not talk? Do these cops not talk? And I'm getting so frustrated. <laughs> and then I'm just like. I was literally like, damn it, M. Night. You're supposed to be making good movies now. Mm-hmm. Why are you? Oh. Right. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because there is a twist. I'm not going to reveal what it is. What's, but there is a like twist. It's a picture of the, of the Hulk character with the... Steve Buscemi's face, like yeah, exactly, You're exactly. Like, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you put, go ahead now. Now, I will say this: it only makes up for probably like eighty five percent of the log- logistical mm-hmm. errors, which is where we were going to get into in just a second. But like most of it, like all of that stuff, as you see it, all of that is going to start to make sense, and you're going to be like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, 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 good. G- g- Continue. Go. Go on. Go on. Right, right. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My right. bad. So, mm-hmm. but getting back to that, getting back to some of the the, mm-hmm. the the logic errors or whatever is, I can understand. All right, uh, Mr. Glass is sedated. Can't really do anything. Right. I can understand you getting into the horde's head. I get uh, Kevin. I can understand right. you getting into Psy- his as a psychiatrist, head. psychologist, psychiatrist. I'm assuming mm-hmm. psychiatrist. Because I can see her trying to talk through him and go, oh. You lit your nine year old character and you listen to them because they're an adult. Uh-huh. See. And then the way mm-hmm. she so she changed how she spoke to mm-hmm. them. Yeah. And that's per- and that's perfect. Yeah. And I guess like I can see her getting inside the head. I can see her putting the doubt in, like he's only really been at it for a couple of weeks. Right. So I'm like, okay. However, <laughs> the overseer, you know, Bruce Willis's character, you have been doing this for, for... thirteen or so yeah. odd years yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you get how is he? Able, how is she able to get into your head? Right, you know, Dave, like David. David Dunn, yeah. Yes, I'm like, how is she able to get inside your head? Because you know, by this right. point, you have been doing this for 13 right. years. Yep. So I'm like, you can't just just because you found out like 
just because like yeah there were some coincidental things mm-hmm. that happened that, to that led to him catching um catching the horde mm-hmm. but i'm like still <laughs> still right. i'm just like you know if you are in these bonds they're just like oh okay uh so you don't think i'm super strong clink yeah yeah you know? stand stand <laughs> yeah. up <laughs> yeah you know take and go bink and go bink yeah and then take the thing and go all right boom yeah, it's like yeah, you're right. I'm not super strong, but then she would have said she would have yeah brought said, up something. Well, those like, are made out of uh, lead based pewter, so mm-hmm. they're not real. We wanted you to think that, <laughs> so anyone could bend them, kind of like he did. Yeah. She did with the the, the horde guy. Right. Those are really old bars. They were from the 1800s or mm-hmm. something. And I go, but okay, now here's the thing about that. Just because we're old doesn't mean they're doesn't easily mean there's... bendable. In fact, mm-hmm. old things sometimes are harder to bend. Exactly because, because they're more pure. They're, well, not only that, but they were thicker. Yeah. So they might be more brittle in some ways. Mm. And if they're rusted through, okay, mm-hmm. I get that. But that that cold wrought iron in some ways is harder because first of all, um the way they made some of those, it it, it would um they would have used techniques even back then that mm-hmm. would have resisted, depending on who made it, mm-hmm. resisted rust in some ways. Right. Because, I mean, if you look at some old cannons from, say, you know, heck, even from the 1700s, mm-hmm. the only corrosion you'll see on it is minor. Mm-hmm. You clean it up and because, I guess, whatever they coated it in or whatever they right. mixed in with it, right. the cannons themselves, you know, heck, firearms from the 1700s are not, I mean, they're just dingy. Yeah. They're, you could still use them. Mm-hmm. And even if they're buried, I mean, they're like, okay, oh, yeah. clean it up, and guess what? It still fires. Mm-hmm. Now, the wood part would be rotted away. Right. But that's because the word rocks. Exactly. Exactly. But, so it's I'm just like, yeah. why so. doesn't he just go, okay, doctor. Okay. I, I, he, and just say this to the doctor. Okay. Well, you know what? I can entertain those thoughts and ideas. I have no problem with that. You make a very valid argument. Because mm-hmm. he's not a dumb guy. Right. He's doing a while. He goes, do me a favor. You know, give me a shot of B12 because I'm feeling very tired and I need some energy. Yeah. As, so. as, a, as, an, as a vitamin boost. Mm-hmm. Because they were sedating Glasses glass, character yeah. with injections, but mm-hmm. mostly medication, mostly right. pills. But they but they did inject him. You saw that. Right. It's like, you know, stick me with a needle. Take my blood. Right. Doctor, take my blood. I want you to test my blood. And, and if you test my blood, so when as soon as they try to stick it in his arm and it breaks, mm-hmm. that you go, oh, well, that's a malfunctioning, yes. faulty needle. You must have got a yes. bad batch. Go get another needle. Yeah. Get a bigger needle. Exactly. Break, 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 break. Okay, I say, dogger, so let's, let's, you're a scientist. Let's prove this logically. Either you've got the absolute worst needles and you got the, the every single defective batch, mm-hmm. which is statistically very, very unlikely and very mm-hmm. highly improbable, mm-hmm. or my my skin cannot be pierced and I might be unbreakable. Exactly. I do enjoy Mr. Glass. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I enjoyed um, the just his overall intelligence, how he was able to outsmart these people. Right. Um, well, and and I will just, say that the people, I, it, it wasn't really hard to outsmart them. Some, some think, of them it really a, wasn't. I think a yeah. Cocker Spaniel could have outsmarted them, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, some some of them, yeah, some of them it wasn't, but no, like, um, like oh, Lord. the... Uh, there are some characters in there. I'm just like, okay, you know, it's it, it's the uh, what is it? The it's the yeah, I'll call it like it is. It's the stupid white person in the horror movie. Yes. <laughs> I call it like it is, and I'm like, but, but like what? I said to you, I was like, why would you get the most inept people working at a facility <laughs> that you know there are three very dangerous people, mm. and and two of them are really bad, like yes. evil. The one guy, you yeah. know, David Dunn is nice. He's actually he's a vigilante. Okay, fine. Yeah. But you know what he did? He never like murdered a bunch of people, right? Right. I mean, from far as we can determine from the the new stuff, he mm-hmm. just maybe beat up bad guys or really slept right. for the cops to get like he did for the But he did kill that one guy, but that guy deserved to die back in Unbreakable, right? Because right. he, he killed that guy, but that guy was a bad guy. He mm-hmm. killed a bunch of people too, mm-hmm. uh, like the Beast did. Mm-hmm. Um, but even so, it's like he was at least doing it for an altruistic means. Even if yeah. he was a bad guy, at mm-hmm. least he was doing it for good reasons. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was not a threat to anybody. Mm-hmm. But the other two were a dangerous threat. And you're like, okay, so you have the most inept people who shirk the responsibilities on a regular yes. basis, given yes. that this guy, Mr. Glass, mm-hmm. is has already done these things. You're like, well, why would you keep letting your guard down then? Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I it was at this point I was kind of like, all right, are you... It... 
it was it was kind of where I'm like, are you doing this for us, the audience, to make it kind of feel like it's like a little bit more realistic because you right. have these people that are just kind of they're lazy at their job and stuff like that. You have people. Well, like but that. here's the other thing: I don't think don't those care. people in the hospital work for the other twist. No, no, they, they don't. couldn't have because they if that were the case, they would have not have been in as inept. Right. Because they were like, oh, this thing we got to make right. sure this is going on. But right. The other people weren't doing that. Yeah. So it must have been. The hospital must have been run by that other whatever, and yes. she was the only one who was right. Everyone else that, was kind of like, yeah, everyone they were else just was regular people working yeah. at who were doing their job exactly, at, although very very badly. Yeah, um, except for the uh, the housemaid or something at the one point when she goes, they're not supposed to be here. Exactly, and she calls somebody, <laughs> and the security guard just lets them out. It <laughs> okay. was kind of like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Or, I'm like, these well, are the worst disguises in the world. Right. And you know what Mr. Glass looks you look, like. You've seen him. After, uh, he's been like, there the longest. You've seen him. Yeah, and I'm like, he's going to, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, why would the guard let that person out knowing there's nobody else in there? Because the only people who would be in there would be the one redheaded orderly guy mm -hmm. and the dark haired orderly guy yeah. he just let in. There's nobody yeah. else there. Yeah. So why would you let some other random person out who never went in? Exactly. Exactly. That doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. yeah. Already, so it's, I'm like, what? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the most you could probably argue about that is like, Oh, that's just a, a temp security guard. That was his first day there or something like that. I, but I he guess. still should have been, that would have been the Stanley cameo if Stanley, Stanley was alive. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, like oh, yeah. Yeah. It's my first day on the job. Sorry. <laughs> you know, that would have yeah. been that funny. Like if Stanley was like, Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> when the other orderly came in right near the end, I'm like, and you see there's something wrong. Yeah. You don't, that's what I was saying. You like, don't call anybody. You don't. That's what I was hit saying. The panic button. You don't do anything. You just yeah. go. What? That's kind of weird. Why is that's, that guy over there? That's why I said stupid white person yeah, in a horror I'm movie like, cliche. What? Like you hear the noise and go, let's split up and find out what the noise. Yes, is. exactly. No, let's, get, let's go. Let's leave. Exactly. As a group, like, let's go. <laughs> and I'm like, it was one of those kind of like, all right, man, look, and, and, like it, this is why part of why I'm so hard on on horror movies and stuff because this stuff happens a lot. Right. And I'm like, you know, at some point, you know, like. We have all of this stuff going out. It's like, look, you need to treat black, black people better in, in these movies. You need to treat Asians better. You need to treat women better. And I'm just like, you know, at some point in horror movies, you got to start treating white people better. I'm like, yeah, you should be offended. With you. I, I am. And here's the thing. I mean, I've seen movies where that happens and like they're in a big group and they're like, uh -huh. oh, no, something bad's going to happen. Let's all split up and, and find the bad guy. And I'm like, I'll be like. If I were in that group, I'd go, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, you go that way. And as he goes away, I go, come on, guys, let's all like this. I'll go this way. And then as he gets, he's getting horribly murdered, the, the other eight of us get away. The acting is like, okay, if you go to an M. Night Shyamalan movie, you you know you're going to get some form of us. Uh, some performances are not going to be as good as you they should be. You know, there are, there are some lines that are delivered flat. But that's mostly his style. So you're kind of like, okay, if you go into this movie, you're kind of – it's – it's not necessarily, I'm not giving him a pass for that, but I'm saying like, you can kind of expect it. Well, I think, you know? but here, I think why in the context of the movie, I think like if you see the, the previews with the, the psychiatrist, mm -hmm. she's not hardly talking much at all. She's being very calm. It's like well, this delusion of you being superheroes. And I think the reason why is because the, the premise of the idea of this guy is a multi, uh, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, multiple personalities, whatever, yeah. just cognitive dissociate, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you call it. And one of them is a creature, basically, you know, yeah. like, it, it, like he's like, Rrr, you know, mm -hmm. um, that and, and Mr. Glass being so uh, like, you know, and we're talking superheroes yeah. and this guy's yeah. unbreakable. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the opposite thing. You got to go, well, we got to, we got to tone it down so much because if not, well, you're Marvel and you're doing these crazy expositions. Well, see, that's the thing. Like with, with most of his movies, most of his movies do have that in there right, right, right. where it was just like, you know, there's the life has been sucked. It is not all of the lines it's just like sometimes of like all right this is weird there's no there's no inflection to what you just said there well, <laughs> and, and as I, and, and as think, a i think why if you look at most of his movies again i haven't seen all of his movies mm -hmm. but if you look at most of them i think why is so that way when you have that whatever the twist or thing is mm -hmm. it's so wow because it was so simple up to that point you know like mm -hmm. holy cow it's like you know yeah. it's like eating a very bland meal yes and then having a really rich chocolate cake you see what I mean? And yeah, you're like, holy that, cow, this cake is the, it's that, so bursting yeah. full of energy. Because everything else was okay. You're like, yeah, yeah. okay. And they're like, oh, but, my God, this dessert is just, my my taste buds are dancing. <laughs> the little things are going, mm, you're like, whoa. True, but I would argue you could still let them at least, right? 
no, speak normally <laughs> to a I, certain degree. Yeah, I, I get that. You know? I get, in terms yet. of the look, um, in in some ways, the, I think the the framework was a lot like Clint Eastwood, really tight he, close ups. The the people, but also the background told the story. Mm-hmm. The lighting was was perfect. It was real. It didn't yes. seem like it was a Hollywood because a lot of it mm-hmm. was kind of dark, but it wasn't dark and like oh we couldn't afford lights. It was. In that in that particular place, that's what the lighting would be. Mm-hmm, exactly, you know, like in the tunnels, or as I'm spitting here, yeah. in the tunnels, or in the hospitals, like very you know homogenous looking kind of like mm-hmm. you know, little of the horrible lights. Yeah, or you know in the radi- radiology, radiography, or the laser mm-hmm. room, or whatever, and you get that weird kind of you know ambient light, and so all that worked really well um, in the in the the light in the, the warehouse and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, you're like okay, the outside lights, everything was was not pretty because the world isn't necessarily exactly all, well, exactly the world itself isn't all pretty it's, exactly that, mm-hmm. that's the one thing i can definitely say about um m night Shyamalan when he's doing his suspense movies mm-hmm. like he can make those he could just do those close-ups and it's just like he lingers on it for so long that it's uncomfortable but it's uncomfortable because like that's the it's the, supposed that's to the feeling you're supposed yeah. to have right you're now it's like you're so close you're like you this know. girl here uh, yeah girl picture i'm like i'm like it's kind of uncomfortable because you're like right up yeah, in the she's face like, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah you're like you know and then i look and i was like wow it's almost like it's a, a cgi yes because it was so close mm-hmm. in, the, in the the um gosh the 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 I don't know um, the frame or the I don't what 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 I'm looking for the it was the the what's the word I'm looking for the Not um sure. <laughs> well I mean it was the clarity of her face mm-hmm. was almost unnatural you're like there's no way a person could look like right this. right you know, right it looked mm-hmm. so I mean her face was. You know, and I'm not trying to sound creepy or nothing, but her face was perfect. There was not a blemish on it. I mean, if you mm-hmm. see her face, it's not a blemish on it. Yeah. She was just sitting there and she kind of was emotional, mm-hmm. but she, they were so close up on her face. You're right. Like, you're like, okay, I'm getting a little uncomfortable because I'm staring at this young girl's face. Exactly. And I, uh, but see, it works on stuff like that because, right. like, that's the way you should feel. You should feel uncomfortable. Right, right, right. It doesn't necessarily work <laughs> for movies like this. Yeah, like the <laughs> last, last Airbender, Airbender yeah. where you're just kind of like, all right, you're, you're spitting on the camera now. Back up yeah, yeah. A, a little bit here. Yeah, it's but like, close your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, come on. It, it's stuff like that. Like, that's his. His wheelhouse, yeah, yeah, in a sense, you know, oh, yeah. like he could really bring out like that just but uncomfortable she seemed, tension. But she seemed fake. She didn't seem like a real person because her face was so perfect. In oh, terms of right, skin right. Skin and just, that's why I thought yeah. it was CGI. I was like, wow, is that like, no, CGI? that's that's how did she looks. They touch her face. You're like, no, that's how she really looks. I'm like, yeah. it's like, wow, mm-hmm. she looks like a, an animated character, like a doll, almost, yes, yeah, like, like, like a, doll. a doll, yeah. Um, and that was again a little bit unnerving because you're like, okay, dolls are creepy. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Like, no, no offense, Anya. You're like, you're, no, 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 no. She's, no a lovely, she's a lovely woman. Yeah, I mean, just, wise. Yeah. Um, I, I thought. But she was But yeah, really good no, actress. I completely understand. It was just like, and they, like I said, he he knows how to use that. Yeah. You know, he knows how to use that. He knows how to use those uncomfortable mm-hmm. close-ups and just linger. You're just kind of like, <laughs> it just you know almost like yeah. just kind of gives you chills or whatever. Right. Because um, they were, I think the the principal somebody was talking as they were. Doing the closest in a few spots like that, we never mm-hmm. get really close on her face, mm-hmm. and so she was just reacting, mm-hmm. and it was cool because I think he lingered because a lot of times directors will linger just so they can see what happens, right? And get a really good take, mm-hmm. and so she might have done that several times before he's got the right one, or right? That was her second take, who knows? And, yeah. and sometimes yeah. her first take is really good, mm-hmm. and they go a few more. Oh, let's do a few more as like fillers, just in case, or, yeah. You know, in case for you safety, to cut away or something, mm-hmm. yeah. Um. So, but but other than that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I. Hmm. I mean, I think this was his best movie since those other ones since the ones that came out right back then. i mean as for split i don't know i've not seen it so but you i will say yes i will say um as far as split goes um <laughs> there's one thing i did want to say this is like i know he cut his hair pretty much for um for uh, X-Men, you yeah. know, so to be the ball of Professor X and everything like that. Um, <laughs> and I will say, since Split has come out, there are some, like, pictures of people, like, that have gotten of him where it's just, like, he looks a little just unhinged. <laughs> like there? Like that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he just looks a little, he, like, he looks like the... 
Like it, he looks like the beast is about to come out of him right I now. Know. <laughs> it's like, it's like Professor X's uh, deranged <laughs> twin brother or something. Yeah. 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 This one. I don't know where I got this one from. Like he about to mess somebody up. I know. He's, he's like, like you ask me one more. Me that. Ask me one more goddamn question to see what happens. Like, actually, either that or like I'm gonna hold my breath until you go away. Because <laughs> it's kind of like with that. I'm gonna hold my breath until you go away. Yeah, but yeah, um, he. I would say he has the he definitely has the most to do character wise because right. he has to bring out all of these different oh, yeah. personalities. Totally, totally brilliant. And he sold it. Yes. He sells he sure every did. single one. Sure and that's did. the thing, like when brilliant. in Split, yep. he's really the centerpiece around mm -hmm. it. I mean, yeah, Anya's good too. The other girls are good, but mm -hmm. they're they they do kind of get sidelined because of because of James McAvoy here. Like he's so good. Right. At what he's doing, it's like, man, like <laughs> he's like, you're bringing all these different personalities in and you, and you could really you don't feel like anything's hammy or over the top or anything. Right. It's just like the, and to the point where I'm just like just different facial movements, different mm -hmm. face, different way, the, the way he, he right, presents himself, himself, the yeah. way he acted, mm -hmm. his facial features, his body motions. Yes. All different. Yes. Brilliant. I mean, yes. I can. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff over the years. Mm -hmm. um, Last King of Scotland, mm -hmm. X-Men movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some earlier stuff he did. Just really, really, really well overall. Oh, yeah. And, but I also say this. We went to the movie the, it, the day it opened. Yeah. The theater was pretty much empty, though. Yes. And it was the it was there was two theaters in town showing the movie. So mm -hmm. maybe everybody was at the other theater. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah. And uh, that's the other thing. It came out around the same time, like mm -hmm. at least in this area. Um like if Eastern it came North out Carolina, around, the, yeah. yeah, it came out around the time the state. It comes out the same weekend that uh, what's that? Punisher, Dragon and Ball, Netflix. yeah, and, uh, and yeah. Punisher on Netflix. A Dragon Ball uh, Super Broly had come out, and right. that was only playing at the AMC. So I was right. like, all right, well, that that's going to draw but a bigger the, but crowd. The parking lot was empty. I mean, True. not just our True. theater, and it was a Friday night. Lot. Yeah, and it was a Friday night. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. I don't know, that was just weird. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I walked in, and I was like, oh, this isn't good for this movie. Because um, <laughs> yeah. Aquaman was still doing really well. Aquaman yes. was still doing really well. Now, yeah. this one came out, so we'll have to see about, you know, that. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, like I said, in terms of this, I think this was better than Aquaman in terms of the acting and the, and the characters a lot. Because Aquaman mm -hmm. is kind of a popcorn movie. Yes, I'm not, definitely. I'm not, I'm not faulting for that. Definitely. I'm not definitely. faulting for that. I mean, it's this one's definitely more the twist and the, and the yeah. tension, like you said, and the, the frustration story. Yeah. and the story. But all that's perfect because it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. With it, Aquaman, yeah, there was some frustration. It was kind of weird, dumb things like yeah. this movie. But you're like, that's a popcorn movie. It's a superhero yeah. movie. This one is, I think someone uh, on one of the online things said, or one of the articles or reviews said, it's not the superhero movie you expect it to be. Right. And I was like, yeah, I totally get that. True. But this is, remember, this is grounded in more reality. Yes. Instead of a superhero universe where you expect superheroes. Exactly. You know, um, exactly. Like, like in the Stanley cutaway, in the, like you said uh, before when we did the... Um, uh, Infinity War is like, mm -hmm. what, your kid's never seen a spaceship in yeah. New, York, New York City before? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, it's, that, it's the yeah. norm. Yeah, yeah. that's that, that's funny mm -hmm. because, well, that guy would have seen it because he saw it before. Exactly. Because it happened in one of the other movies. Exactly. I mean, like, okay, I get it. That's funny. <laughs> yeah.